something to you. Tony Gregg came to see me. I asked him to come and see me. And I said, I have a business proposition I want to put to you. <clears throat> you must give me your solemn oath not to discuss it any further with anybody, win, lose or draw. Now, what does Tony Gregg do from there? I thought it was a very sensible strategy on my part. Uh, he, he should, I think, have said he was an honourable man and captain of England. He should have said, no, I can't. He didn't know what I wanted to talk about. Well, I mean, you must have given him some indication. None at all. And I enjoyed it. I mean, and he enjoyed it too, I think. I think he liked that kind of confrontation. And that, that, that interview, I'm, I'm doing a, um, a show for, uh, for Nine, in fact, uh, about my Australian interviews, and that's a keynote, a keynote interview that I did there. It comes back to a question of loyalty, Kerry. That's but, I mean, if I said to you, Michael, uh, I'd like you to ca come and, uh, and, and have a talk about something, uh, and it's when you arrived, uh, I said to you, now, before we discuss this, I want your solemn word that it won't go any further than you. Wouldn't you accept on that? I would book? accept that. On well, the that's other hand, exactly what I did to Tony Gray. All right, but I would uh, there also reserve the right, if I were in his position, as captain of England, to turn around at the end and say, I'm sorry, but I can't be any part of that. Well, that, that's, that's another choice. The only thing I'm saying to you is there's no way, with any honour at all, that he could do anything but remain silent. Now... Oh, yes, but the, but the dishonourable part was that he went along with your plans, that he actively well, recruited people, Kerry, while he was captain of England, privy to important information on the other side. There hasn't been any important information on the other no, side but for a hundred years. He was in the... <laughs> he was... He was, playing, he was playing a dual role, and that you cannot deny. Well, I'm not... I'm not I didn't think I was here to defend myself. You're not? Uh, if I was here to defend myself, I'd take a different attitude. I've been very open and very frank with you. Uh, and I believe that, uh, that Tony Gregg made a business decision, a business decision to come with me rather than staying with England. Now, you're a Yorkshireman. And all Yorkshiremen are unreasonable about cricket. <laughs> it wasn't just about cricket. It's about well, the, the, the timing was World Series cricket, which I disagree with at the time. He was right, but uh, we had this uh, row on there. But it's also about him and about his father and about this extraordinary family that he came from. And it seems to me it just represents that Australian story that here's a dynasty that started with a guy finding a ten dollar note at a racetrack and putting it on a horse, and that's how it starts. I mean, that seems to me to be. To be a kind of a, a symbol, in, in a sense, of Australia, of, you know, the possibilities of Australia. The possibilities of this country are limitless. How do you like being in the other chair in an interview? <coughs> I, I actually...